What's up, guys? Jaxel here. Um, you know, Scoreboard Assistant is, well, and its original version, Expert Panel Writer, coming on around six years old at this point, and it's been a long time since I last did a tutorial for Scoreboard Assistant. I think it was when Scoreboard Assistant 1.0 came out, and we're now up to version 17. So I figured I'd put it together a new tutorial for uh, new users who... Um, you know, you watch the old video, a lot has changed from it, so there's a bit of a more learning curve now. So I want to put a new uh, video that goes over some of the more innate settings with the program. So, you know, here we have uh, Scoreboard Assistant version 17. Well, I technically think it's version 18 because we started from 1.0. Uh, okay, so, and I have three tabs. I have an Event tab, a Versus tab, and a Casters tab. Let's start with the Event tab. Um... Actually, you know what? First, we have a program, and you can add new tabs by clicking on this down arrow. There's a, a whole bunch of tab items you can add that are local, and then there are tab items you can add which are external services and some option screens. So we're going to start with the event tab, which is a text fields tab. And the text fields tab is simple. You uh, put in text, four pieces of text, and that's it. Now, when you uh, click Save, uh, it will output uh, the data in these tabs to the Output folder, which is right there. And uh, see, so this is the Event tab. It went to the Event XML file. And the Event XML file is, uh, there we go. It's a, a simple XML file. It's got the data uh, in text 1, text 2, text 3, text 4. Uh, visible equals true, and the last time it was saved. Visible equals true is kind of a uh, dummy data. You can just make that true or false simply by checking or unchecking this visible option you get from right-clicking the uh, save button. Uh, you know, if you want, you can use it for whatever the hell you want to use it for. It's not used for anything natively is what I'm saying. Okay, uh, something else you're going to notice is we have a text 1A and a text 1B. And that is because every text field in this program can actually be split into two text fields by simply adding a uh, double pipe. So I'm going to go to break weekly, blah, 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 double pipe. This is a test. And when I click Save, you're going to see this file update. And we have text 1, which is the entire string, text 1a, which is everything before the double pipe, and text 1b, which is everything after the double pipe. The reason for this is it allows you to, to basically link two pieces of data into a single entry. Um, now, these four pieces of uh, text actually each have their own database, so the drop-down menu for each one is separate. And you can edit these databases by right-clicking the Save button, going to Collections, and uh, clicking on the one you wish to edit. So, for instance, I want to get rid of this test one because doesn't do anything for me. So let's get rid of that. And now it's gone from this database. Of course, if I were to click Save right now, it would get re-added to the database because anything you type in these text boxes will automatically get saved to the database. So let's get rid of it. Um, another option you'll see here is Auto Backup. Auto Backup simply means the data will be backed up to the databases when you close the program. Backup data says Back it up now. And Remove tab removes the tab. Simple enough. And there we go. Now we're back to what we had before. Now, you know, this is an easy one. And uh, you may be wondering, if you use this a bit, what is the difference between text fields and lower thirds? Uh, casters tab I have here is a lower thirds tab. And you'll see it actually looks a bit different. And the major difference here is the databases. While the databases in the event tab, which is a text field, each of the four fields has its own database. On the casters tab, all these fields are linked. So, for instance, I can put again commentating, and then uh, comma lang is commentating, and then they switch seats. I need to swap them, and I can do that very easily. Now, if I were to right-click and go to collections, there's only a single database, and this single database populates the entirety of all four fields. That's the difference. Okay, now let's, uh, you may be wondering, uh, XML files, I use 
um, a streaming platform that doesn't support reading of XML files. Um, I think XSplit supports XML. I'm not sure if OBS does. Uh, but if, let's say, you're using OBS and you can't use XML, what you can do is right click the save button again, go to text config, and I want to config uh, text field one for now. And by default, you see it says XML only. That means that the text is going to be sent to this XML file only. If I were to click image, well, that's a little uh, off the screen. All right, there we go. Now it's on the screen. Uh, I changed the resolution of my monitor 720 because it's easier to record locally. So when you guys are watching the tutorial, the screen isn't that small. I figured this would be better. That's why it's like that. It won't be like that on your screens because who the hell views their computers at 720? Anyways, if I click image, you see this comes out. And uh, let's close the XML file for now. And let's see. I want the text to go to an image size of the image is width 50, height 50. Uh, let's uh, give it a uh, black outer glow. Let's make it white text. Give the glow uh, three font. Let's make it century gothic. Uh, let's make it, uh, let's make it uh, b super bold. I can align it to the left. I can align it to the top. I can even Let's uh, give it a negative three degree slant and then click save there. Now I'm going to click save. And you're going to see a new folder is going to be created here called event. There we go. And text one, the text was placed into an image instead. And the image is like that. Now that's actually kind of ugly. And that's because the uh, configuration here is not a one to one ratio of how it actually ends up being in the image. There we go. Nah. Yeah, I'm basically, I, I think it's the rotation that is making it look ugly. Let's uh, see if uh, two will do it. There, that actually looks a lot better. Anyways, as you can see, you can output each text as an image if you wish. Uh, you can also have it output directly as an individual text file. So let's do that. And now it has a text file with just that single piece of text. Now, I know this is a lot easier uh, to read because you don't need to program around any XML tags or anything like that. And so for a lot of you, this will probably be what you're using. But just know that text outputs are not there by default. It defaults to XML only. So you actually have to set it for each field you want to output as uh, text to text. All right. So let's look at some of the other tabs. Uh, scoreboard, uh, two-player scoreboard, two-player scoreboard pluses, and two-player scoreboard 4P. Let's go with the regular two-player scoreboard for now. And I have one already set up here with uh, Versus 2. And uh, Versus 2, very similar to the event tab. Uh, we have our list of matches. We have our list of games. We have our list of players. Now, uh, the databases in this, even though there are uh, six uh, text fields, there are only three databases uh, because the scores don't need a database. They're just numbers. And uh, matches and games have their databases. But there's only a single player's database because both of these fields are tied together. So let's uh, go uh, KDZ versus KTAR. I can click swap, and they get swapped around. This will also swap around scores. Yeah. All right, then we have our clear button right here. But no, that's the copy button. Clear button right here, which clears the scores out in a single click. And the copy button. The copy button is something that's specific only to versus screens. So uh, only to uh, scoreboard screens, for that matter. And what the copy button does is it takes the contents of these fields and copies it to your clipboard. So uh, let's uh, open up Notepad. There we go. And if I were to paste what's uh, in my uh, clipboard after clicking copy, I get this. The break number 392 SB4 KDZ versus KTARA. Let's, uh, let's use uh, some simpler names so we can see it better. All right. Banjo versus Corvus. Clip, click the copy button. There we go. 
And the reason for this is if we hit the down arrow button and we go to config options, we have an option called edit copy text. And what this is going to do is we're going to click on that. It's going to bring up and we're going to have our prefix, which is the break 392 game match, uh, which we have set to A. It can also be set to B. Now, you know how I have the uh, text A, text B stuff here? That's basically what, what, what it does. It's telling you which side of the double pipes to uh, take uh, the data from. Now, if there's no data there, it's just going to be blank. Uh, versus is the, uh, the text to use for the verses, and the ampersand is the text to use for uh, team games. So that's uh, basically that. All right, and we're going to... So if I change this to the break number 492, whoops, and then click copy again, you're going to see it says 492. Now, uh, it's 392, so let's leave it at that. Okay, there we go. And uh, now you'll see we did the A, B thing. So generally, it's going to take the A's. So banjo, there is no B section. Corvus, there is no B section. Casual matches. Now, casual matches does not actually have an A section, which is why there's no uh, match notation over here. And uh, Smash Bros, it's going to take SSB4. Now, let's say this was uh, Losers Round 1, and I copy that. It's going to say SSB4 L1, because L1 is the match notation. So if I want it blank, I just leave it as... Uh, nothing before the double pipes. Very simple, and that is uh, basically for all the uh, scoreboards. Now, there's also scoreboard plus plus, and this is scoreboard with images. And I already have this set up in a tab called Melee. So let's create that tab now. Um, the database, when, now this is the first time I'm actually showing you the create tab button. The title is what's going to show up here. And the database is basically just going to be the name of the folders. Because of this, every tab has to have a unique database name. So if I were to do this as versus two, it's going to say a tab with this name already exists, and it's not going to allow me to do it. So let's uh, go back to that melee uh, two-player screen. There we go. And I'm going to add. And you'll see this is almost exactly the same as the... Uh, versus screen except there's also image identifiers there uh, let's delete this folder we don't need it anymore oh, it's open in notepad okay now it also has image files and these image files are basically just images um, and these image files are determined based on the input folder for that database. Now the input folder is basically where all the settings and the databases for all these uh, tabs are stored. So we have these four databases here. These are the four text files and you can see they're just there in text. Everything in this program is stored in text. Okay, so now we have our melee input file, input folder, which has our databases, or text configs, and you'll also notice I have a whole bunch of PNG images. And these PNG images, let's uh, delete a whole bunch of them. Let's delete all but two. Ooh, it's permanently delete because it's a, uh, on the thumb drive. So let's just move them. There we go. And I'm going to right-click this and say uh, reparse the folders. There we go. Parsing. And now our image database only has two things in it, Bowser and Captain Falcon. The text is taken just from the name of the file, and the image is the image itself. Uh, but let's we want to add these more images to it. There we go. And now we're going to reparse the folder. And now all the images are in this database. This will allow you to basically say, hey, we have... Uh, uh, Band-Aid versus uh, AD. AD is playing Falco. Band-Aid is playing, I don't know, Young Link. And we're going to click Save. Now we have our output folder. It has our Melee 2 output, which is everything we went through before when we talked about the other tabs, including Image 1, 
an image too, which are the names of the characters. But then we also have our melee folder, which includes two images, which is an image of uh, Band-Aid's character and the image for AD's character. Now, I have big images here. You can have a small little icon. So this can make it so you can put an icon next to the person's name, depending on what character they're playing. Because, you know, when it comes to Smash, uh, no one necessarily sits on the correct sides of the screen because it's all about, you know, what port you plugged in and whatnot, and that may not be player one and player two. So often it's important to uh, show what character they're using so people don't know who is who. And that's the reason for that. Uh, so that's pretty much the difference between uh, Scoreboard 2 and Scoreboard 2 Plus. So let's uh, remove that tab because I don't need it anymore. And now let's add a new tab, Scoreboard 4. Let's go Versus uh, 4. Now I don't have any databases set up in advance for this. So you're going to see a lot of empty fields here. The game, match, players, scores, swapping. You know, same thing as Scoreboard 2, but with four player fields instead of, uh, instead of uh, what, what am I saying? Instead of two player fields. So it's, I mean, it's just bigger. Then we have our copy. Now copy, uh, instead of just copying straight to the clipboard, it's going to bring up this uh, menu, which is basically asking you, what is this? Is this uh, a free-for-all, which would be copy versus, it would be, uh, player 1 v versus 2 versus 3 versus 4. Or is this player 1 and 2 on a team versus 3 and 4. Player 1 and 3 versus a team of 2 and 4. Player 1 and 4 versus a team of 2 and 3. Now, it's, uh, again, for convenience. Well, let's remove that. I'm done with that. Now, what other tab items we have? We have an image select. Uh, image select by default is 4. Image select eight is uh, the same thing just with eight images instead of four so we have our images and right now because I didn't make the database of images let's see the database of that was uh, images eight I think I believe is that what we called it yes images eight and let's um, da -da -da -da. take some of these melee images Put them in the images 8 database, then uh, reparse that folder. There we go. And now we have eight images we can choose from. I, I guess if you're doing eight player smash, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think eight images is a bit overkill. Some people wanted it. Originally, I have image select, which only has four images. I don't know. People wanted it. So it's there. Uh, but it's the same thing as the image selection in the uh, Melee tab, just without the text fields. Uh, what else do we have? Counters up. Now, counters, I, in I initially put in for uh, uh, death counts. So we'd be doing, or not death counts, drink counts for when we do drunk souls. You, you guys have ever played drunk souls? Uh there are rules to it. Every time you die, you take a drink. Every time you die to gravity, you take two drinks. Every time you uh, chug an Estus, you take a drink. Every time someone beats a boss, everyone else takes a drink. Stuff like that. And so, you know, this was basically our method of uh, uh, how many drinks each player has taken. Now, naturally, you could also use versus tabs for this. Uh, but, you know, it's just a different style. And, of course, there's resets for each individual person let's remove that tab all right next tab uh, clocks and timers clocks and timers pretty simple let's go call it timers we have our system time here we have a stopwatch here and we have a countdown so let's start that countdown uh, countdown when you're inputting text is always going to be hour minute second so even if you don't want to display the hours, you still have to have those zero zeros there. So let's leave them there. Okay, so system time, uh, it's going to go hours, minutes, seconds. Let's say I want to, generally, I guess you'd want to leave. You know what? Let's change that to lowercase h's, which would be, it's 3.20, 3.18 p.m. Um, how do I do a.m. p.m.? 
Hmm. You know, I don't remember the codes for meridians in uh, in system time, but you know, it's it's there somewhere. You guys can look it up. Uh, is it T? No, it's not T. Lowercase T. There it is. Lowercase T. There we go. So now we have lowercase H's, 319 p.m. We can get rid of the seconds. There you go. Now it's 319 p.m. Uh, this is basic uh, Unix uh, code. Let's put it back to default. Uh, stopwatch. Um, it's pretty similar to that, except you have to put slashes in front of specific things. Countdowns, same thing. I want to get rid of the hours from the countdown. Let's get rid of that. And now we have a minute on the countdown. Uh, the codes between the text here and the text here are slightly different. Um, it's on the thread. I, I posted it somewhere. And then we have, uh, let's see, if you click Save. There we go. Now we have our output folder. And we have the timers. And what it's doing is it's up consist ah, constantly updating this file with the times. How often does it update? Let's find out. Let's right click, go to frequency. Uh, 10 frames per second means it's updating 10 times per second. Two frames per second means it will be updating two times a second. So every time I go back to it, it's going to say there's a new version because it's updating two times a second. And you can see how quickly it's updating based on uh, every time this spins. If you go 60 times a second, now, uh, one of the things while you're using this, you're going to notice that, hey, it doesn't actually update uh, as consistently as I would like. And that is because this is all based on your computer power. So, like, I could have it so that it updates two times a second. Now, what you notice is on most seconds, it'll update two times a second. But sometimes it's only going to update one time a second. So, I have it to 10. On most seconds, it's going to update 10 times a second. On some seconds, it's only going to update 9 times a second. And that is because, let's say your computer falls behind because there's lag or something like that. The update is going to delay a little bit. That's why that happens. And then, of course, you can stop the timer so that it stops updating the uh, timer XML. Uh, let's remove that tab. Let's add a new tab. Music player. Music player is a bit finicky. Um, a lot of what it does is just take contents of fields and stuff. So I'm not really going to go into it. You know, maybe I will go into it. Let's go um, music. You can click on various services. So for instance, let's go to uh, Nightbot. Please enter your Nightbot username in the extra data field. Eight-way run. And it's going to check in. No, it didn't do anything. I don't know. It's really been a long time since I've since I've used this. So uh Nightbot error. You know, I really maybe I don't even have a Nightbot account anymore. So that's probably why it's not working. All right, let's uh move on from that. Um everything up here are basically just programs. So if you have a program open, it will try to read the information from the program to find out what song is playing. Um some of these fields, like you can have song by artist on some of these programs, they also have album information. Uh, but, I mean, most of them don't. Yeah, I don't think I have Nightbot. You know what, let's load up Nightbot on my other computer. Log in with Twitch. Oh, yeah, Nightbot's not even authorized for my account. That could be why it wasn't finding anything. All right, auto DJ, let's uh, play a random song. All right, 
And now let's uh, see how quickly it updates. All right, anyway, right now it's not working. So uh, let's move on from that. And let's uh, remove that tab. All right, next tab, PC monitor. PC monitor is simple. It's a PC monitor. Uh, processor usage, memory available, disk information, Ethernet information, the amount of data going through each connection. What is isatap.home? Hmm. I don't know, but I have two uh, Ethernet controllers on this computer. And then, of course, this is the periodically saved to XML file button. Not a very useful tab, but people like it. I don't know. Get rid of that. And now we have external services. Now, external services, something uh, I expect more people to use. So let's go to uh, Twitch. Let's go to Twitch. So let's uh, add a Twitch tab. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to have to log in here. So we're going to click log in. The window's going to pop up. This is my Twitch account. It's going to ask me to authorize. I'm going to click authorize. There we go. And now we have... Uh, Twitch information it shows you the number of followers they have, the ne current number of viewers, the peak number of viewers, uh, the game we're currently playing. The game list is empty. I can type it into every anything I want. I don't know what's going to happen if I type in a game that doesn't exist. Is it going to tell me the game doesn't exist? No, it's not. If I go to my Twitch dashboard, what's it going to say? It's going to say I'm playing that game, whatever game this is. <laughs> wow. Okay, so apparently uh, Twitch allows you to enter games that do not exist. That's fine. Okay. But let's uh, right-click this, get the list of top 100 games currently being played on Twitch. And now we have this. Let's leave it as Smash Wii U. Click Save. I can change the title. I can also get the title uh, text directly from one of the text fields of a uh, text tab, which is uh, some of that. So let's say this is the Break Weekly. Let's uh, wipe that out. Let's say this is the Break Weekly number 392. I can click Save on that. I can also run an ad. It has not saved. It's... Sometimes the Twitch uh, server's kind of laggy, so I click save, but it hasn't updated yet. So, yeah, unable to update Twitch because Twitch sucks and I uh, wasn't able to connect to their API. I think, you know, their API actually does crash <laughs> quite a bit. And when that happens, uh, pretty much you have to just wait for their API to come back up. It's going to time out after 10 seconds. Uh, let's close the program and reopen it because sometimes that makes it easier to deal with Twitch's problems. All right, I can also run an ad by clicking the button. I can also right-click and have it auto-run an ad every 30 minutes by clicking that check button right next to it. There you go. Now it's going to auto-run an ad whenever this uh, timer reaches 30 minutes. It's going to run a 30-second ad. You can run up to a 60. I'm sorry, a 33-minute uh, 30, ad. We don't need that. All right, let's get rid of Twitch. Now, uh, Hitbox is pretty much the exact same thing as uh, Twitch, so I don't really need to explain it. Uh, YouTube, a bit different from uh, from Twitch. Let's log in. All right, uh, I'm going to log into my streaming account. Now, YouTube does not allow you to edit what game it is playing, you're playing through the API, um, but you can add the description of your stream. Um, generally, YouTube is going to decide what game you're playing by the contents of your title. So if there was a game called Gravity right now, it's probably thinking I'm playing the game Gravity. Uh, if I put like something like Dash League of Legends at the end, it's going to think I'm playing League of Legends. Um, Hopefully, YouTube uh, fixes their API so that it allows that sometime in the future. Well, the we also have Challenge. Uh, Challenge will allow you to uh, 
You know what? Let's show it to you guys. You put in your API key and then a URL to a bracket right down here. And uh, it will give you a list of upcoming matches, previously play reported matches, and stuff like that. I'm not actually going to go more in depth with that because I don't want to uh, look at my API key right now. League of Legends, same way. Let's go League. You need your summoner name. Then you need your API key. Uh, again, all this API key stuff, if you guys look at uh, what's uh, listed on the uh, thread on obsproject.com, I'll give links on where you get your API information. Anyways, that's pretty much the uh, the extent of how this program works at, at the current moment, version 1.0. One seven. You can have it snap to edges, etc. Anyways, uh, peace out, guys, and uh, yeah, have fun.